Um, hello, I'm Winlin. Uh, um, I'm a software engineer uh, focusing on media streaming cloud services. Um, um, I currently work at Tencent Cloud. Uh, before this, I was an RTMP server developer uh, at a CDN company where I developed a uh, live streaming server from the ground up. Uh, um, after that, I joined Alibaba Cloud as a WebRTC server developer and created an RTC cloud service from scratch. Uh, I have over a, a decade of experience in media server development and cloud services. I developed the SRS media server for simple real-time server in 2013. Um, this project has gained widespread popularity and is now um, used in various applications across the globe. Uh, SRS has always been a real-time server offering second level latency with RTMP or HTTP FLV streaming and sub-second latency with SRT or WebRTC streaming. However, through community feedback and experience, I've discovered that low latency streaming relies on more than just WebRTC. Um, this is the concept I'd like to emphasize today at um, ComCon. Uh, main idea, according to community feedback, many people tend to use WebRTC for low latency live streaming. However, other factors can influence latency, which means WebRTC might not be the best fit for every situation. Uh, the device or tools used can also affect latency. Uh, sometimes users might not want to switch to a new device that supports WebRTC because they're already comfortable with their current tools and have a workflow that includes them. Um, take OBS, for example. Um, it's a popular live streaming tool, but it doesn't support WebRTC. Uh, um, plus, users might have various devices or plugins connected to OBS, making it difficult to switch to a WebRTC-enabled device. Um, uh, different platforms also handle latency in their ways using specific protocols. Um, like YouTube relies on RTMP or RTMPS. Uh, Unity goes with WebRTC and uh, some broadcasting platforms use SRT. Uh, moreover, converting protocols is crucial too. Uh, for example, let's say a user has an SRT device, but wants to watch the stream on a Unity game or broadcast it to YouTube. Um, in summary, WebRTC might work well in certain cases, but other factors can affect latency. Um, um, users might not want to switch to it because they're used to their current tools and workflows. Um, each platform has its own way of handling latency. Um, so protocol conversion is uh, essential for streaming across different platforms. Um, growing community, I started SRS back in 2013 and it initially supported RTMP, HTTP, FLV, and HLS. And then in 2015, I added support for live streaming clusters. And finally, in 2020, I brought in support for SRT and WebRTC. Uh, now, if you compare SRS to other open source projects, you'll see that NGNX to RTMP is mainly a live streaming server, while Janus and MediaSoup are WebRTC SFU servers. Um, but SRS is actually the most popular project with the most stars on GitHub and it's used worldwide with an active community contributing to it. Um, in 2020, uh, SRS saw a significant growth rate and it's been speeding up even more in 2021. Um, this could be due to various factors 
like the pandemic, but the growing support for protocols like SRT and WebRTC um, and our efforts to build a global developer community, uh, uh, we learn a ton from our community, uh, especially from their feedback and use cases. Uh, they also play a crucial role in shaping SRS's uh, technology and direction, which helps us keep evolving and improving. Uh, besides high performance, we've come to understand the importance of being highly efficient. Um, that means being easy to use, having fewer dependencies, and being compatible with cloud native environments and different platforms. Um, we've also found that business and use scenarios can vary a lot from one user to another. Um, so we take these differences seriously and work hard to adapt to them. Um, for instance, you know, when developing low latency technology, we don't just focus on the protocol, but also um, consider the client's platforms and, and user habits. Uh, in the next few slides, I'll introduce some everyday use scenarios for low latency streaming as suggested by our community. Uh, um, it, because if you've listed in few WebRTC existing models and what it's easy to do, and um, you can publish your stream with WIP and play it using WEP, um, this one result in a latency of around 200 milliseconds. Uh, some developers might be curious about how to publish live streams via Chrome. Um, in this case, WIP is the only known method to ingest live streams from your camera using a browser. If you need to stream your camera through a web browser to a video platform that only supports RTMP, you'll need an SFU to convert WebRTC to RTMP. Um, SRS is an example of such an SFU. Uh, once you converted the stream to RTMP, you can send it to the video platform. Um, you can use RTMP for uh, sub-second live streaming when network conditions are great. Uh, however, WEP is a better and more recommended option for everyday scenarios. Um, WIP and WEP are signaling protocols for exchanging SDP between WebRTC <laughs> and servers. Uh, WIP is specifically designed for publishing streams uh, while WEP is for playing them. Uh, uh, the Underlying media transport for WIP and WEP is WebRTC, which uses UDP. Um, uh, RTP or SRTP is employed to deliver media packets and feedback, uh, allowing WebRTC clients to adjust streams and achieve extremely low latency. Uh, sometimes users want to know how to play an RKMP stream from their existing device on a web page. Uh, this situation requires using uh, an SFU like SRS uh, to convert the stream to WebRTC. Um, we'll go into more detail on this later. <clears throat> uh, use case publication and blog. Um, when we think about low latency streaming publications and blogs often come to mind with WordPress being a great example. Uh, did you know there are about 1.3 billion websites worldwide and one third of them are built using WordPress? Uh, people use WordPress for blogging, e-commerce, uh, organizational websites, uh, product presentations, and more. Um, do you have a blog or website? Um, have you tried low latency streaming before? Uh, let me tell you a story about Robin, a video editor. Um, he wanted to share his product design with friends through WordPress because he needed high resolution content that Zoom couldn't handle uh, due to poor video quality. Um, Robin wanted 
low latency streaming to discuss, make changes, and communicate about the product design. Um, he chose WordPress because it has it has many plugins that let him add password protection to the page, so only he and his friends could access it. Uh, but there was a problem. WordPress doesn't support low latency live streaming. Um, Robin could only use HLS, which has more than a five second latency, and that didn't work for him. Uh, uh, so uh, Robin joined the SRS community, and together they achieved a latency of about one second, uh, making him very happy. Uh, first, he captured and published the screen content using OVS, uh, resulting in high definition content. Um, and then he used Seniors Player, a WordPress plugin, to play the content via WebRTC, achieving an amazing latency of about one second. Um, Robin even wrote and shared a blog called How to Publish Your SRS Live Stream Through WordPress. I can give you more examples. Uh, you can use WordPress and SRS together to create a video conference, uh, live stream events on WooCommerce, or even make a browser-based live chat room. Um, for sub-second live streaming, you have different options. Uh, um, you can use OBS to publish either an RTMP or SRT stream, um, which can then be played on Chrome via WebRTC uh, while using WordPress. Um, or you can publish a WebRTC stream on WordPress Chrome and play it on a web page. Um, or use a Unity client to play the stream. Uh, it's important to note that as a streamer, our TMP and SRT can also be used for sub-second live streaming and aren't limited to just WebRTC. Um, and then uh, they also sell a very experienced uh, signatures that are gaining in other skills atoms. Uh, so they all. Uh, this makes it easy for uh, developers to add uh, real-time streaming to their games. Uh, uh, apart from gaming, uh, Unity is popular in the creative industry, especially for virtual reality uh, or augmented uh, reality. Uh, it helps create detailed designs uh, and brings more realism to things like vehicles and buildings. Um, the Unity, uh, the Unity uh, Web RTC SDK is an official tool um, maintained by uh, Unity staff. Um, it helps developers add, you know, real-time streaming to their games using the, the Unity game engine. Uh, the SDK supports peer-to-peer -peer communication or SFU server and is used for WebRTC in Unity. Um, a Unity developer asked the SRS community how to use the Unity WebRTC SDK with SRS. Uh, sadly, the demo doesn't work with OBS or SFU, uh, only peer-to-peer -peer communication. Um, this is a big issue for sub-second live streaming. Um, even though it's just uh, a client P2P demo users want to play their streams from OBS or use a WebRTC SFE server to improve quality and save upload bandwidth. Uh, to create a Unity WebRTC demo with SFU support, you need signaling to exchange the SDP. Um, but there's no RFC or standard for this yet. Uh, that's why only a P2P demo is available in the Unity Web RTC demo and uh, no demo for the uh, Web RTC SFU server. Uh, um, WIPE is an RFC for signaling that's still in draft state, um, but many WebRTC clients and servers support it. Um, um, 
So, you know, we can use WIP to fix this problem. Uh, we worked with Unity developers uh, to add WIP support in SRS and created a demo for Unity uh, with live and WebRTC streaming support. Um, and so, but this demo shows how to publish and play streams to SRS using Unity WebRTC um, and interact with OBS through RTMP or SRT stream. Uh, many Unity developers are now using it. Uh, um, for instance, you can use SRS as an SFU server to let multiple Unity clients communicate through WebRTC. Um, uh, or um, you can use Unity clients to access live streaming from OBS or interact with Unity clients through a web page. Um, awesome. Um, for sub-second live streaming, uh, it's important to note that WIF is a key signaling protocol while WebRTC focuses on media. Um, so emphasizing WIP is crucial when connecting different systems and uh, projects. Um, uh, and the TV and broadcasting industry is increasingly organizing events outside the studio, especially for news or sports. Um, sometimes you need to switch between multiple cameras, treating each one as a scene in OBS. Uh, but how can you do this remotely so you don't have to be uh, physically present at every location where news happens? Um, there, you can manage multiple events at once uh, from a distance. You know, um, the demo picture shows how to do this. Um, the left section represents the news site with multiple cameras, um, while the right section shows the output stream with an added logo in text. Uh, a TV editor receives uh, SRT streams from cameras at news sites using SRS. Uh, they remotely access OBS uh, to pull these streams from SRS switch between them and edit them by adding logos and text. Uh, since the latency is less than a second, all the streams are synced and the TV editor doesn't have to worry about any issues caused by unsynchronized streams. Um, another important aspect is that TV often requires HD content. So SRT is a better option than WebRTC. It um, SRT is widely supported by various broadcasting cameras and tools like OBS and vMix, which TV editors and creators are familiar with. Um, um, the latency of SRT is around 400 milliseconds, which is greater than WebRTC's latency uh, of about 200 milliseconds. Um, however, uh, SRT still allows for live streaming in less than a second. Uh, SRT is also used for long distance transmission, spanning countries, continents, and oceans. Um, SRT, which is UDP based, uh, works effectively even under poor network conditions. Uh, plus many video platforms support publishing SRT streams. Um, your hardware device and user habits are crucial um, for sub second live streaming. Uh, it's not realistic to expect TV creators to buy new cameras or force all camera manufacturers to switch to WebRTC. Um, uh, and this is the slide number eight, use case audio AI processing ASR or auto speech recognition is another scenario where low latency is crucial for real time captions, translations, and even controlling AI robots remotely uh, to add real time captions to your live streaming platform, you can use ASR. And so while YouTube offers this feature, you can create and implement your own ASR system for your platform. Um, uh, the text generated by ASR can be sent to your AI system for various purposes, like controlling robots and sensors or generating responses to questions. Um, ASR can also translate the text to another language and use text-to-speech technology 
to convert it back to audio for machine-based simultaneous interpretation. Uh, the demo in the picture shows the text generated by the ASR for a live stream. Um, SRS powers it with K2, uh, the K2 FSA or Caldi 2 Engine, a uh, popular open source project for ASR. Um, you can stream your live broadcasts from OBS to SRS or use WebRTC uh, to publish to SRS. Uh, then uh, Sherpa NCNN FMPEG will ingest the live stream and convert the voice to text. Uh, we're currently working on simplifying it uh, for easier use. Um, we'll also provide a Docker image and integrate it with SRS Cloud uh, to make it more user friendly for direct use. Uh, um, live streaming is just one of many ASR applications but it's significant um, um, with the integration and ease of use of these open source tools endless possibilities will emerge leading to innovation uh, low latency is crucial and we've tested the asr to introduce only about 600 milliseconds latency um, so if the if the live streaming is sub-second, the system can archive second level latency. Uh, this solution works for many businesses. Um, uh, moreover, combining ASR with TTS and AI can result in interactive digital humans in the metaverse. Um, that's cool. Uh, uh, Technically, uh, K2 uses FFmpeg to decode voice data from a C to PCM since FFmpeg uh, is needed for decoding audio streams. Uh, you can publish the stream through WebRTC and SRS will convert it to RTMP for FFmpeg. Um, by the way, FFmpeg doesn't currently support WebRTC, but we're working on it. Um, unfortunately, it's a challenging and complex task that might take six months or even longer. Um, so after all, I hitting 6Ks, you know, right now exist into priest systems during the distance. Um, but this, this can affect the, the latency. Um, when the resolution goes up, the bit rate increases too. Uh, this means more packets need to be sent and packet loss can happen, which ultimately makes the latency higher. And uh, if you're looking for an 8K stream, H.264 won't work. If you're um, the looking at work because it only supports up to 4K, uh, instead, you should use H.265 or HDDC for 8K or even higher resolutions. Uh, some developers have tried using SRS to deliver uh, HDR streams with SRT and they say it works well. Um, but they also mention that the latency is higher. Um, if you're using uh, WebRTC, there might be some solutions for 8K, but it seems to be outside of Chrome. Uh, this is because 8K affects the latency, which is the main goal of WebRTC. Uh, we're still actively working and researching in this area. Um, I don't want you to think we've completely figured it out yet. Uh, slide number 10, analysis pros and cons of WebRTC. If you need a 200 milliseconds latency for things like video wow. chat, conferences, remote control, or showing your camera on a web page, WebRTC is the only option right now. Um, you shouldn't use RTMP or SRT as they won't work. Um, um, WebRTC clients get feedback through RTCP, uh, which can drop frames or use a lower bit rate. Um, also, the player keeps a latency from building up by using a jitter buffer. Um, 
by default, B frames are turned off to keep latency low. Um, B frames can refer to future frames uh, and increase latency, uh, um, but when used, they can make the quality better within the same bit rate. Uh, WebRTC is both a transport protocol and uh, an end-to-end -end solution designed for low latency. Uh, um, this design uh, uh, ensures very low latency throughout the whole system. Um, um, WebRTC might change the SPS PPS to use different codec parameters which is a small difference between it and live streaming. Um, so there's always an inserted SPS PPS before each IDR frame. Um, this feature makes the DVR function differently. Um, usually the SPS PPS stays the same, letting players play a DVR stream. Uh, uh, but with WebRTC, the SPS PPS might change causing some players to fail playing the DVR file. Uh, you might need to transcode the DVR file of WebRTC, um, um, but this can lead to higher CPU usage than uh, live streaming and make WebRTC live streaming more expensive. Uh, um, also, uh, WebRTC always encrypts UDP packets with SRTP while live streaming can use plain text HTTP streaming or HLS. Uh, plus the UDP performance is slow uh, because the kernel takes time to generate, send and receive UDP packets. Uh, these factors can make WebRTC more costly compared to live streaming. Uh, um, some new video clouds like Cloudflare and Tencent Cloud support when web's WebRTC delivery but traditional CDNs don't. Uh, sometimes you might need to build your own WebRTC delivery network within your country or company. Uh, the mobile web browser, especially on Android phones, uh, doesn't support WebRTC well and has many compatibility issues and bugs. Uh, make it analysis why RTMP and not LLALs the RTMP protocol delivers video frames over TCP for streaming. Um, similarly, HTTP FLV and HTTP TS deliver media packets over HTTP chunked, which is essentially the same as a TCP stream. Uh, when you use OBS to publish an RTMP stream and SRS servers to deliver it, SRS converts the RTMP stream to an HTTP FLV stream. Um, you can then use a, an H5 player to play the HTTP FLV. Um, um, the whole process is based on streaming with packets delivered in a uh, kind of pipeline similar to a water pipe. And um, typically latency uh, ranges from uh, one to three seconds, but most of it occurs on the player side. Um, if you switch the player to WebRTC and, uh, uh, and convert RTMP to WebRTC, latency drops to around 400 milliseconds. Uh, as shown earlier, even when using OBS to uh, publish an RTMP stream, you can achieve sub-second latency. Um, this is because TCP performs just as well as UDP when network conditions are good. Um, in this case, latency is not caused by the protocol, but by the player. Um, for instance, using VLC to play RTMP uh, results in a latency of 10 seconds or more. Uh, uh, however, uh, playing HTTP FLV with an H5 player leads to a latency of about one to three seconds. Uh, using a WebRTC player reduces latency even further. Uh, um, in reality, internet network conditions can sometimes be poor. Um, so RTMP is best used in a private network 
Uh, instead, you can use SRT to publish the stream. Um, some developers claim that LHLS can achieve one second latency. Um, unfortunately, this might only be possible in experimental settings due to CDN network servers, caching time, and players may use different strategies to fetch segments. Uh, moreover, uh, achieving such latency is impossible on the internet, and you need to conduct a real test to verify. Uh, in my opinion, LLHLS or CMath cannot achieve the same low latency as RTMP, HTTP, FLD, or HTTP TS, which is usually between one to three seconds. Um, traditional CDNs uh, support LLHLS or CMath very well, uh, but only a few new video clouds like Tencent Cloud uh, offer support for HTTP FLV streaming. Um, when considering sub-second latency, LLHLS or um, cannot, CMF cannot achieve it, but RTMP has a chance to do so in some cases. Uh, this is not just for experimentation, but also for online production. Um, and then the rich of this really offers with visible energy programs that use that to uh, really analysis both SRT. Uh, you might be wondering about the differences between WebRTC and SRT. Um, WebRTC has a latency of around 200 milliseconds, while SRT has a latency of 400 milliseconds. Um, both uh, technologies are great for uh, sub-second live streaming and um, work well with internet-based products. Um, um, some, some clients even support both technologies. Um, it's important not to mix them up uh, as they serve different purposes. Um, WebRTC is meant for communication, while SRT is specifically designed for low latency media streaming. Uh, SRT can't achieve a latency of 200 milliseconds or less. So if that's your goal, you should use WebRTC. Uh, but if you want uh, high quality visuals uh, in HD live streaming, even with a bit more latency, SRT is, is the way to go. Uh, if, if you're using a, a broadcasting camera or system for live streaming with low latency, SRT is better than WebRTC. Um, so this is because SRT is more widely supported in broadcasting devices. Unlike um, WebRTC, um, SRT was graded to replace RTMP. Um, so it doesn't have the SPS PPS issue that WebRTC has. Uh, that's why SRT is considered DBR friendly uh, in the live streaming industry. SRT is more widely supported than WebRTC uh, with many tools designed um, specifically for it. Uh, also, FFmpeg and OBS support SRT but not WebRTC because SRT is seen as a live streaming protocol. Um, we're currently working on enabling FFmpeg to support uh, WHIP and the PR is uh, ready for review. Um, in summary, if extremely low latency is your top priority, go with WebRTC. Um, but if content quality matters more than low latency, choose SRT. Um, and so, you know, milestones, I founded SRS in 2013 after leaving a CDN company where I had built a live streaming cluster to replace Adobe Media Server, right? Um, in 2013, we released version 1.0, which included support for origin and edge servers, HTTP API, and trace ID based logging. Uh, this feature allows you to easily search and find logs for a specific session using a trace ID. Um, many other media servers don't have good logging support, which is crucial for live streaming. 
Um, uh, since live streaming involves long-term sessions with multiple log lines and simultaneous sessions on a server, filtering logs for a specific session can be challenging. Um, debugging and fixing bugs are nearly impossible without logging. Uh, um, we experienced this pain firsthand at the CDN uh, company when we couldn't figure out why a publisher failed or a player stuttered. Um, drawing from my debugging experience at the CDN, um, I made trace ID-based logging a key feature in the first release of SRS. Um, we kept improving SRS, and by the time we released SRS 3.0 in 2019, it supported essential live streaming features like clustering, RTMP, HLS, DBR, and forward, as well as HTTP API and callback. Um, after joining Alibaba Cloud in 2017 to work on uh, WebRTC services, um, I spent two years learning. Um, in 2020, SRS gained a significant feature, WebRTC support. While the community committed to supporting SRT, uh, we began building the community uh, in, in 2020, and it has grown rapidly since then. So over the past two years, the uh, entire community and I have been working together to develop SRS 5.0 and 6.0, which include Windows and HEVC support. Um, with a latency range of five to 10 seconds, uh, SRS supports HLS, um, you know, offering the best compatibility for all clients. Um, one of SRS's key features is its ability to convert between various protocols. So we, um, for example, uh, you can uh, publish content using RTMP through uh, OBS and play it on WebRTC via Chrome. Uh, this allows for cross-domain and cross-business video streaming, letting you use popular tools like OBS for subsec and live streaming, or even Unity game clients. Uh, to scale out, SRS supports origin and edge clusters. can handle millions of clients playing a stream. Uh, we're also working on a proxy cluster for WebRTC and SRT. Uh, um, while not everyone needs the cluster feature, it makes the system more robust um, and ensures you won't have to worry about business growth. Um, SRS isn't just a high performance media server. It also makes debugging easy. Uh, the trace ID based logs help you quickly identify bugs. Um, SRS uses a complex error object that includes the stack and variables in the error message, making it simpler to understand the exact issue. Um, additionally, SRS offers an HTTP API for querying streams and clients, as well as an HTTP callback for handling events and accepting or rejecting connections. Uh, SRS also includes a Prometheus exporter, uh, allowing for direct connection to a cloud native monitoring system. Um, this means you don't need to write code to monitor the server um, as Prometheus does for you. Um, uh, finally, SRS is adaptable to k and cloud native environments, enabling users to deploy, upgrade, and scale out SRS using k um, So genuinely, some of that steps the comparative business solution. Uh, people often ask me about the differences between the open source server SRS and commercial cloud service servers. Um, over the past 10 years, I've built both types of servers from CDN media servers to cloud web RTC servers uh, while also maintaining SRS. Uh, since I work at Tencent Cloud um, where both services serve global customers at a high level, I'll compare SRS with Tencent Cloud service to RTC or web RTC and Streamlink for SRT. Um, when it comes to core features like protocol, multiplexing, demultiplexing, 
um, and delivering WebRTC or UDP packets. SRS focuses on standard protocols to ensure compatibility with Chrome. Uh, uh, in contrast, TRTC and Streamlink must also fix specific bugs that occur on different customers' devices or applications. Um, SRS only supports the standard NAC congestion control algorithm for WebRTC, while TRTC supports additional algorithms like GCC, FEC, and AI-based algorithms tailored for various use cases. Um, SRS uses LibsRT for the SRT algorithm, but Streamlink optimizes algorithms for different use cases and even supports multiple path transmission. Um, um, since SRS doesn't perform complex algorithms and doesn't cover corner cases, its quality may not be as good as TRTC um, or Streamlink. However, having fewer features and algorithms makes SRS simple and easy to customize, allowing it to adapt to the entire community's use scenarios. Uh, most importantly, SRS needs to remain simple due to its small part-time maintenance team, ensuring the project stays alive for years or even decades. SRS doesn't build a network that requires resource scheduling and, and load balancing, but both TRTC and Streamlink have built globally distributed networks with a large scale of servers to support their services. Um, if you choose to use uh, SRS or another open source server, uh, you'll need to build the network and maintain load balancing. Uh, on the other hand, you can create a custom network tailored to your needs to host a private network, uh, media server, uh, tool chain. Besides developing the SRS media server, we also prioritize creating a set of tools for live streaming and web RTC. Um, these tools are even more important than SRS itself. Uh, we developed SRS as a benchmarking tool for RTMP, HLS, web RTC, and GB28181. Uh, uh, it can, you know, conduct, publish, and uh, play benchmark tests to optimize system performance and estimate capacity. Uh, with every SRS release, we use SRS uh, bench for load tests to identify bottlenecks. Uh, for example, SRS 2.0 increased the play connections from 2.7K to 6K. Uh, we can also perform feature tests using SRS Bench. Um, uh, in GitHub C SRS Actions, we integrate Sears Bench into our CI CD process and test cases for every commit and pull request. Um, and developers widely use SRS uh, Bench to um, benchmark other servers like Janus or um, other RTMP or WebRTC server. Uh, besides SRS Bench, we incorporate FFmpeg into SRS's CICD process for automated feature and bug fix testing. Uh, and the service player supports various screaming protocols, including HTTP FLV, HTTP TES, HLS, WebRTC, WIP, and WEP. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the SARS console displays the status, statistics, streams, appliance, and bandwidth of SRS. Um, SRS is based on state threads, an underlying coroutine library written in C that simplifies media server maintenance. Uh, today, we regularly maintain and refine state threads to suit a variety of modern CPUs, such as ARM, Arch64, Apple M1, Loongark, uh, RISC-V, and more. Uh, Word being, a WordPress CNRS player is a PHP written H5 plugin for WordPress. Um, with it, all WordPress users can play live streaming in WebRTC, making it a small but useful tool 
Um, our research on eBPF focuses on identifying and categorizing audio and video packets for TC network simulation. Uh, it also allows us to simulate uh, packet loss for specific packets like ice binding request packets. Um, we'll continue to deliver more tools for live streaming and WebRTC uh, to improve developer efficiency and reduce open source project maintenance costs. Um, community, we're committed to building an open source community and nonprofit organization for SRS, allowing every developer to create a video service for live streaming and WebRTC. Um, although SRS already supports many features, um, perhaps more than other servers, this is just the beginning. Are you plan to support even more while maintaining simplicity and, uh, and user friendliness. Uh, instead of merely adding features one by one, we might consider community feedback to adjust our goals, architecture, and values. Um, our aim is to create uh, an open source media server for the community, uh, not, for, not for business purposes. Um, so we have, we have no plans for monetization. Uh, uh, many developers new to live streaming and WebRTC can't afford paid services as video streaming is only a small uh, yet significant part of their business. Uh, our goal is to empower people worldwide to build a video service that engages their customers and powers their business with a high quality, free open source SRS server. Um, and while some developers may be financially comfortable, um, others around the world struggle to run their businesses and open source solutions can help them survive. Um, and uh, it's since we have a large user base worldwide, uh, some developers might need extra support. Uh, donating to SRS can provide additional assistance to those who need it. Uh, we greatly welcome and appreciate your contributions to support SRS. Um, we need your help to pay for essential infrastructure like Docker Hub and AI tools, which assist us in writing better documentation. Um, AI can help us write accurate and fluent documents in English and Chinese. 10 times faster. Uh, we're also using AI to create video tutorials, significantly improving our efficiency. Um, although there's a cost, it's well worth it. Um, while SRS was created in 2013, we only began building our community in 2020. Um, so our community is just three years old, not 10. Um, um, there's much to do and learn, um, especially in documentation and communication um, with developers worldwide. Uh, that's why I'm here at ComCon to share SRS. Um, as a new and growing community, we warmly welcome contributions from everyone. Uh, um, their ICEL license SRS is licensed under either the MIT um, or Mulan PSL 2.0 license. And um, it's important to note that the Apache 2.0 license uh, is compatible with uh, Mulan PSL 2.0. Uh, the Mulan open source community created the uh, Mulan PSL 2.0 license, which is the first license available in both Chinese and English. Additionally, the OSI has approved this license. Um, the Mulan, an open source community also supports SRS and helps um, develop and incubate projects within China's startup open source community by offering hassle-free incubation assistance. Uh, keep in mind that the MIT and Mulan PSL 2.0, um, compatible with Apache 2.0 licenses, are business friendly. Uh, this means you can use SRS in your company or cloud service. Your code can be open or closed source, and you don't have to pay any fees. 
Um, thanks. Uh, I'm delighted to share SRS with all of you. Um, and it, you know, inspires me and encourages me to think more deeply. Um, I look forward to receiving more feedback about SRS and my contribution or even further contributions to SRS. And I hope to see you all again next time.